Patricia Terry Ross is a Kresge Award-winning harpist and music educator whose music can be heard everywhere from iconic Motown recordings to the Michigan Opera Theater. With so many endeavors, it's hard to list them all. So let's just hear it from her. Each year, the Kresge Foundation honors a single artist with an eminent artist award. The award recognizes three dimensions of a person's contributions. First is excellence, full stop. Second is the contribution to the community over a long period of time. And third is the elevation of an art form of particular importance to our community. This year, our award went to the artist and educator, Patricia Terry Ross, one of the great harpists of our time. tell you. I heard buzzing in the, along the way. You try to remember to keep this angle so that you don't hit the back of fingernails. As long as you turn over and replace that when you do, do a turnaround thing, it's going to hit the back of a nail and it'll buzz. Pat's educational career is absolutely breathtaking. For over three decades, she's led the Cast Tech High School harp and vocal ensemble through extraordinary performances, experiences, and educational opportunities. She continues to mentor and guide students to this day. Every possible thing that we can do that gets little people, um, young people involved, and to experience the joy that they get from accomplishing the discipline that you get to have to learn a piece and to have it performed well, that's something that um, if they're serious about it, they, will, they and their parents will want to pursue, where can I take my kid to be able to get this kind of exposure? And of course, we know that we are losing so many programs in Detroit. I have, a, I have an older sister who began studying the harp at Cass with Pat's predecessor, Velma Froud. And so I was aware of the program and of the instrument and I knew that I wanted to attend Cass Tech. And I don't think I was so much impressed by the thought of taking lessons with my sister's teacher, but when I saw Pat, who came in at on the last semester of my sister's senior year, when I saw her, I thought, oh my, you know, she is so put together, and she's talented, and she's an African-American woman, and she plays this glorious instrument. When I get to Cass, that's what I would like to do. Pat has always been the kind of teacher that would put the interest of her students um, as a priority and uh, I knew that she was open and welcoming so when I got to CAS and they put me in the band class I decided I didn't want to be there so I went across the hall to the harp studio and asked her if I could enroll in harp and she said yes and um, just hands-on all the way with her students uh, 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 uh. and no, no gesture it's just moving a straight line. Remember when we first learned to play fast arpeggios? Mm -hmm. I said, it's not, you know, cut out the, the gesture. You want to just, because it's going to sound, it's almost, it's going to sound like it on a piano would be played all by one hand. But we can't do that. So we have to go, and how you place precisely makes that happen. Pat has been heard for decades by the audiences of the Detroit Symphony Orchestra and the Detroit Opera Theater Company. There was an article in the paper or something about DSO Harpist is retiring. And one of my students read it and she said, so what are we gonna do when you leave? Like that, and I said, 
who said I was leaving? Because I hadn't decided yet, you know? I was sort of on the fence thinking, do I want to go through this audition and, you know, on your best day you can win, you know? And on somebody else's best day they can win, you know? You never know. And I said, literally, I love this job. And if I leave this program with nobody to replace me, it will die. Because you can't just bring in an instrumental music teacher who knows nothing about the harp. And I had the choral music ed background, so I was teaching vocal as well as harp. So I had a, a full program. So it was <clears throat> that question by that little girl was an epiphany for me. It made me confront myself and say, well, you know, you've been good enough to play with the DSO. You've been able to travel with them. You've recorded with them. You've toured with them. What more is there? Students of the Motown Sound will recognize the name of the harpist who did countless recordings with great Motown artists. Stevie Wonder, Marvin Gaye, The Temptations. She was everywhere. Sometimes I'll hear things on the radio and I'll say, oh, that's me. And then other times I'll hear something and I'll think it was me and then somebody else will say, sometimes they would record more than one version of something and you think maybe this one is yours and you hear someone else say, oh, I played that. And you think, well, I don't want to put that out there in the universe and somebody says, she didn't play that, that was me. Pat is a very dignified person. The one thing that even her grand students know is the phrase that she learned from her grandmother, which is to do honor to your gift. And so that means that what has been placed in you to do, then to be a person of integrity, you do the most that you can with what has been given to you to do. Uh, and, and that's where we learn in this program, and that's what we teach the students. That's what inspires me. That's what inspired her. So I'm sure little did her grandmother know that generations later, that phrase would be affecting the lives of young people still. You know, our most famous thing is the glissando. So generally the glissandos are, are sometimes dramatic, like big and loud. <laughs> And then sometimes they're like, and then maybe somebody, it could be a fairy coming in, you know? It, there's no, I don't, I don't think of the harp as being a one-trick pony. 